The fire covers over 101,000 hectares. An unfavorable forecast. Lots of extreme fire behavior still to come. Heading south to safety. We're just glad to be out. An uncertain escape for traumatized evacuees. I couldn't see the tail lights of the car in front of me. And this disaster hits home. Witnessing the devastation in real time. Good evening. There are still two basic priorities tonight in and around Fort McMurray, Alberta, getting people to safety and defending against a fast-moving fire now expected to double in size in the next 24 hours. These pictures from today tell the story. Whole neighborhoods completely lost, homes destroyed, and the charred remnants of everyday life like these burned-out appliances left behind. Over four days, this fire just keeps growing. It's now burned through 100,000 hectares of land. The shifting winds have complicated a massive convoy of evacuees trapped north of the city. And in an overwhelming sign of solidarity, donations across Canada are now up to $30 million. Our coverage begins with CTV's Peter Ackman near the fire line. Just how much the fire has devoured is now on full display. A firefighter captured these images surveying the damage in Fort McMurray. Neighborhoods reduced to smoldering ash. Burned out skeletons of cars left behind and stubborn hotspots firing up. It's evidence the threat is ever present. After days of hunkering down and ignoring a mandatory evacuation order, the danger finally drove Shale Pierce out. I think anybody's seen a fire like this. It's uh, kind of heartbreaking, really. I mean, I mean where's the one going to go? I'm going to go right now. Firefighters have saved much of the downtown core, including most of the airport and the hospital. Job one remains to keep people and get people safe. But the devastation is spreading. Flames breached the community of Anzac, south of Fort McMurray, and swallowed up 20 buildings. The swirling winds have made its path difficult to predict and impossible to fight from the ground. There's snig in the fire going in different directions as well. And so then you have almost tentacles growing out of the fire. And then when the wind changes, they come around and you end up in a loop in the middle of a unburned area where you could be trapped in. The province has deployed a massive arsenal to tame it. 490 firefighters, 11 helicopters, 16 air tankers. The fire has burned over 100,000 hectares of land and it continues to grow fueled by dry conditions. Well, I do expect that there's a high potential that this fire could double in size by the end of day tomorrow. As another day ends here, Lisa, firefighters are in for another all-nighter to do what they can to contain this fire. Stunning image behind you, Peter, and the idea of this doubling in size is truly frightening. What kind of reinforcements are coming in to try and drive it back? Well, they're bringing in more water bombers from Quebec and British Columbia, uh, more firefighters from on the ground uh, from all over uh, the western provinces, but they haven't been able to attack them from the sky the way they wanted to because there's been too much wind, the fire has been too hot and too out of control, and only now that the wind is dying down, they've been able to start attacking it. Okay, so they are handcuffed by the wind. Peter Ackman at the fire line tonight. Thank you for this report. Now, winning or losing this all depends, as Peter said, on the weather. CTV meteorologist David Spence is with us again tonight from Calgary. David, is there any rain in the forecast for the weekend? Yes, Lisa, there is some rain in the forecast, but it's not going to be a lot of rain, and we're going to have to wait through the entire weekend before we get there. This computer model is looking into the weekend, into the future, and by tomorrow night, at about this time, we're going to see some rain showers developing in the northwestern part of the province. Now, the fire zone is right about here, and this moisture is going to move toward the fire zone by Sunday morning, and we may see a band of rain going over the fire early Sunday morning. There will then be a break, and after that, we've got more showers coming in later on in the day. The the wind on Friday will be fairly calm, less than 15 kilometers per hour. On Sunday, it'll go to 20, gusting to 40 kilometers per hour in advance of the rainfall. And when the showers arrive, the wind will be still fairly brisk. This area of heavier rain, unfortunately, is expected to move north of the fire zone.
Lisa? All right, David, a mm. few days ahead. Thank you for this again tonight. Now, sometimes the simplest way to really get a handle on the scope of this catastrophe is a before and after image. Here's a striking one. This is a satellite image of Fort McMurray from last month. And as the slide changes, here's what it looks like after the fire, totally distorted from the widespread damage. That wind we've been talking about temporarily shut down a massive convoy of evacuees fighting the smoke to get to safety. Here's Jill Nakashan from Highway 63. Days after they fled the fire, thousands of evacuees lined up to drive back into it. In groups of 50 with a military plane overhead, Fort McMurray's northern evacuees moved south, driving past flames into thick smoke down the only highway to freedom. I'm just glad to be out. We're just glad to be safe, and thank you to everybody. In stops and starts, as many as 1,400 vehicles made it out this day, this couple among the first. We were waiting there yet since yesterday at 11. Um, as you can see with the three dogs and two cats, we have no room in, in there and this is all we have. Except for a fish they've kept in a water bottle since the evacuation. In each car and bus, another story. This man sold t-shirts in Fort McMurray and took his business with him. A pair of animal rescuers have been saving pets left behind during the evacuation, including one hedgehog. Now safe, but the future so uncertain. When you lose a Canadian city, 100,000 people are homeless. We're not evacuees anymore. We're refugees. We've lost everything. An uncontrolled and unpredictable fire. The push to remove more evacuees will continue tomorrow if conditions allow. They had good visibility for about 70% of the route, but about 20 to 30% was smoke and flames. So uh, it was challenging for the crews. A continued effort to reunite those separated by a disaster. Like 10-year-old Ryan finally back with his mother after she fled north and he and his classmates were taken south. It's okay, it's okay, let me see you, okay? I'll never go anywhere, okay? I'll never go anywhere, baby. And families will continue to find each other as more people move from the north, south, to centers like this one, now anticipating hundreds more evacuees. Please, that's a powerful reunion, Jill. Thanks for this tonight back at the evacuation center in Lakavish. There are so many heart-wrenching stories emerging this week. None quite as painful, though, as the tragic death of two teenagers killed trying to escape Fort McMurray. We can confirm tonight that Emily Ryan, a 15-year-old triplet, and the daughter of a deputy fire chief was killed in a car crash on a jammed highway Wednesday. Her 19-year-old cousin, Aaron Hodgson, was also killed in a collision. The accident happened as Emily's father was fighting the fire. Today, the Premier of Alberta mourned for her province and the people, now by the tens of thousands, flooding into Edmonton, looking for emergency financial aid. CTV's Alberta Bureau Chief Janet Dirks on that story tonight. They're among Edmonton's newest residents, Alan and Linda Lynch. Their house in Fort McMurray burned to the ground. You're lucky to be here, I guess, eh? The couple will be living with their daughter, Kathy, in her studio apartment. He's with me for right now, so, yeah, we're up for as long as they need. We're just going to figure things out after that. Others will be forced to stay in evacuation centers. The biggest one set up in the city has room for 4,400 people. Imagine yourself uh, having to spend not only two weeks on a cot, you're not camping, but you're camping in a mass situation. The Alberta government will be giving emergency financial assistance, $1,250 per adult, $500 per dependent. That's the same amount given to the Slave Lake evacuees five years ago. Not enough, says Tim Blondell. He and his sister fled Fort McMurray with nothing but what they're wearing. They're going to need a lot more than that to get through this. Edmonton's mayor says so far the city is absorbing the influx with the help of its citizens. We've had uh, some private landlords step forward and offer either deep discounts or free rent for several months. This man is willing to open up his house. Just to see those people, what they went through, unbelievable. 
Brittany McDonald is relieved the school system allowed her to enroll her six-year-old daughter in an Edmonton class. Not sure when they'll be able to go home. She needs more normal is what we were hoping for. So um, they've opened their, their arms to us and taken us in. Edmonton's mayor says the city can accommodate evacuees for several weeks, but encourages those who can to stay with family or friends until a longer-term housing plan is worked out by the province. Janet Dirks, CTV News, Edmonton. Now we